did you make a Ganesson in this yes. reactor? Yes, yes. In, in, in the, with this machine, with this structure, yeah. we made all super heavy nucleus till 180. Let's come in. North Pole and South Pole. So north and south. South, yes. And the chamber between yes. at high vacuum. Actually, this is so-called U400 because the diameter of the pole is 200 centimeters. The iron source is upstairs. Yes. Highly charged iron are injected. Yes. The vertical direction come in. So they come into through the, the into, in, into through the magnet. Come into the chamber. This is extraction point over there, and the beam come in this way. This is magnetic lenses, yes. which work like the optical lenses, just to focus the beam. and dipole magnet like that one for deviation. And the separator is... This is a really historic relic. This is from the time that the Institute moved to here, to Dubna. And what's really interesting is to look at the heaviest element, which is number 104, which in that time in Russia was called... What was the name? The heaviest element was number 104, which was called Kuchatorium. It's now called Rutherfordium. But that was before the UPAC working group. Yes. And I really like to see this an old periodic table. And the fact that it's radioactive nearby and you can't even go near it is really exciting. And of course, I'm next to Yuri Aganesian the personification of element 118, the heaviest element, a Ganesson. So what a better combination could one have? We're now on the top of the accelerator that was used to make the super heavy elements, including a Ganesson. And this is the place where the projectile, the calcium-48, was injected into the accelerator. The cost of the calcium which we consume is approximately 10% of the operation cost of the machine. The calcium is in a little oven inside yeah. here at 600 degrees centigrade. Yeah, it and it comes in and you're using about one milligram each hour we were told. One milligram maximum. maximum. Between half and one milligram. The calcium ion goes about five or six meters altogether yeah. from here till it gets into the accelerator. Then they're speeded up to a tenth of the speed of light and then they go off down the beam line into the chamber where the target is. And the beam line is designed so you get the maximum number of calcium ions to go through it. So the really exciting thing is that none of this has been shown before on video. So you're the first to see it. So we're now in the area where the elements are created. So the big accelerator, the cyclotron, is behind that wall and the ions come down this pipe. The key part now is the target, the target which is irradiated where the two atoms come together and fuse to make the new element. But first of all, let's look at the target. This is the wheel for the target. Exactly, I mean, each uh, consists of the section. Yeah, this is one of the sections. 
And I people know. are making target section by section, yes. section by section. One section takes one week. This target is a titanium foil, one and a half microns. Exactly. And then you put a layer of berkelium or... Yeah, uh, by electric deposition, by electric deposition, you, you make, I mean, you do at, the thickness, at the thickness of approximately one micron. So you and backing foil, 1.5 micron. Does the beam go through the titanium first? Through the, so the site of titanium. Yes. So the beam goes through the titanium and then onto the berkelium layer, which is free so that any ions or atoms that are formed can go straight out without any hindrance. The wheel is going round really fast, much faster than a CD. And it's going round very rapidly so that no particular spot on the target heats up too much because of the energy of the beam. This is a target, uh, windows of titanium that separates the high vacuum of the cyclotron from the hydrogen atmosphere that is round the target itself. You can see that the beam really eats in to the window. So it goes this bright purple color. But if you look at a new set of windows, they're clean and silver. This is where the elements are born. You have to imagine the target that we've just seen inside here, but in a box. The plastic outside is a sort of fume cupboard to pump away any radioactive gas or anything like that. But inside is the rapidly rotating target. Every so often, and it's really quite rare, one of the atoms of the new element is formed. And then that atom starts off down this tube towards the detector. This is the place where we detect the new elements and it's the end of the journey for the atom. So the atom comes down this tube and into the detector here. The detector is a solid plate and the atom hits it and sits in the solid and its decay is detected electrically. And by watching how the element decays, you can then get evidence what it is because you can see it forming daughter and granddaughter, great-granddaughter elements, and all of those are elements that are already known. So you can then work out that you've really got a new element. And the decay is nearly always by emission of alpha particles. It's a doubly charged helium nucleus. It's really very moving being here, because in this apparatus, six new elements were created and Yuri Aganisyan explained to me that they just put this together with pieces that they had around the lab and it wasn't something that was specially built. They assembled it and it's been running for 7,000 hours every year for many, many years and produced six elements. left in the final nucleus and calcium 48 has been the absolute key to the success of the synthesis of these super heavy elements in Dubna.